to Sydney, Australia. Well, we've been here the last few days, went down there to the harbor. Uh, it was really cool. The bridge, the opera, all these things, but we ain't here for the, the Sydney Harbor. We ain't here for no freaking opera house or no manly beach. We're here for the racetrack, the revival of Eastern Creek, formerly known Eastern Creek, now known as Sydney International Speedway. Me personally, I like that, you know, whole name Eastern Creek. You know, it's kind of like, I'm going down to the Eastern Creek, but now it's got some some Taj Mahalness to it. You know, we went over there to, to Perth Motorplex and once again, one of the most amazing facilities in the world is the Perth Motorplex. Just how they got it set up with the drag strip, with the racetrack, the venue, the people, everything just going so amazingly over there on the West Coast. But over here on the East Coast, I think we might have got close to something a little bit, uh, or uh, trying to, it's, it, it, it visually looks like it's getting close to a Taj Mahal anyways. Let's look around, turn the camera around. Here is the new uh, Sydney International Speedway live here uh, at the track here in um, this sector of Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. As you see, the all seated grandstand stadium style seating down the front straight away. You got the upper terrace areas, the VIP outside indoor seating as well. And then obviously through three and four you got the the stadium seating and then more so just uh grass seating i, I don't know terrace and stuff that kind of is like how most people you know americans be saying stuff there's some lingos that are a little bit different the grass seating is what i would call that the general admission admission seating where you just go sit on the yard over there with your fold out chairs that's just something that australia is doing all on its own nobody else really does do that but Sprint cars are in the pitting area. There is a, a couple of rigs already back there. The, the grandstands, uh, obviously, not being a fully filled just yet. I know they're going to be opening up here soon to let people in, but uh, pitting area is open for cars to get into the racetrack currently. I believe they're having around 30 sprint cars here tonight. Uh, I've heard around 20 late models are going to be in on hand as well. Uh, and Jock Goodyear going to be here in a seller car. Of course, I believe he'll be driving the same car that Aaron Reitzel won the premier, uh, you know, uh, sprint car champ, the grand annual uh, sprint car championship over there earlier in the year. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how Jock Goodyear gets around this place. But you already see the new shape of the track that we're, we're looking right in front of us. Um, they do have the, I guess they're calling it the pole line drawn out with white uh, chalk on the bottom of the speedway. Uh, and it's pushed out. You can kind of see the difference in coloration in the dirt versus the old inside line and the new inside line. You can kind of see it there uh, through the inside of the racetrack. But once again, this place is uh, obviously Perth is the, the mecca uh, of, of everyone's example when it comes to racetracks. I think in the world, to be honest with you, I think that Perth Motorplex is just that dang good when it comes to facility and just set up and everything like that. But this place is getting pretty dang close. Let me just uh, turn it back around here for you to see. Once again, the stadium style seating, I'm a real big fan of that. Obviously that's more Americanized also in a certain style or certain way, uh, just because I haven't been to a lot of tracks where people bring their fold out chairs to watch racing events. I think Eldora is probably one of the only ones in the States and, and it's kind of like off to the side near the fence seating. Not necessarily the main style of seating venues are are set up with you know grass and fold out chairs but this venue the uh, sydney international speedway here formerly known as eastern creek it does have the stadium style seating for everybody to view and it, it's obviously very mo very modernized you can get a little nice little shot of the bar right here zone out uh you also have really good concession stand areas very professional brand new uh, looking things and I know that some people are hearing some race cars in the background That is because very similar to um, Perth you do have a drag strip off to the side. It's not connected It's not on the the back side of the of the speedway Like if we were at Perth right now at the top of the grandstand You could literally just like walk across over here and watch the starting line of the uh, um uh, drag racing of course you got uh, looks like this is the well, let me reframe this is turn four right now over there on the turn three that's where the drag strip is we'll walk over there in just a second 
that is the main entry to the speedway so for those who are watching and potentially coming out you got a really nice beautiful parking lot you got a nice entryway here very nice landscaping where people can walk up walk in and then of course the first thing you'll see is the sprint car hub t-shirt trailer uh, it looks like churro is going to be here going to have to try some churros later today um, but it is very interesting to have this entryway and then of course all the new signage that has been put up it does say sydney international speedway as you're driving into the track as you're getting here you kind of see the layout of things as well right here uh just a little bit drag strip circled and everything like that so you come up here entryway sprint car hub tent right here uh everybody doing some good job setting things up uh and then you got the main entry to the speedway right here in turn in turn four uh, and then you could choose to seat, seat down there or back over there where the drag strip is. They're actually running today, I believe, super bikes. Tony Loxley was telling me super bikes are going to be here, but look at that. That is pretty dang nice, uh, especially when you're going up to, against the Taj Mahal of Perth. This is kind of what you have to roll out in Australia to compete with such an event and venue uh, or such a venue like Perth is. I really do like the fencing here. That's something that Australia, I think, has a real big... Uh, advantage on the american tracks is safety uh, not just in having an insurance program not just in having a governing body for safety but also fencing you know uh one of the first tracks i came to when i landed it's it's a video called america to avalon i arrived to avalon a little bitty track outside of geelong you know and i got there watched it you know facility was eh, whatever just typical american facility and i go to some of these other facilities and i hear people kind of talk bad about avalon say it's this junk track you know horrible facility and all this and that and it's like hold up now avalon's like better than 90 percent of america's regular race tracks and then if you consider the fencing of avalon the actual race safety of avalon it's like up there with some of the best. You go look at some of the racetracks and their fences in the States. It's like, hey, something could go wrong here in a hurry. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So something that I have noticed is the fencing and the actual safety of the racers and on the racetrack. Uh, you know, Stockton, for those who have been keeping up, just went to a quarter mile racetrack. Uh, and they just posted some recent pictures of the, uh, up, the updates to that facility. And there's like... I, I saw Chase Johnson make a comment like, what are we going to do about that thing off of turn number three that's just like square and could potentially be a safety hazard? And they're like, he's like, I I'm a racer and I, I can't get an answer. Nobody's saying anything to me. Nobody's answering me anything. And they're planning on going green. You know, like over here in Australia, that, that would have to be approved. You know, they would have to go over there and make sure it's safe to race on. So I think there's a lot of things that the American racing scene, especially in the safety department, uh, that we could learn from the Australian situation, not necessarily just the governing body to try to make everybody's P's and Q's line up, but also in just like general standards of what a racetrack is supposed to be and has to be. But anyways, get on a little bit of a rant here. I don't, I don't even want to get on a NASCAR topic. Although, big shout out to Chase Briscoe starting a sprint car team and giving guys a shot. You know, Sarf is a really good driver and it's really cool to see Chase Briscoe start a 410 sprint car team and give a good driver a chance. And I put on there, I said, this is how NASCAR people and drivers can get involved with the sport the right way. Because that's honestly what I, I think they could do. Start a damn team and put someone else that can drive in the race car if you can. Anyway, so now we have worked our way after we ran it just a little bit. Over into uh, turn three. And then you hear the bikes going. Let's we'll see if we can get them zooping by. We are at the end of the drag strip. Yeah, there they go. We are at the end of the drag strip back here where the track is actually at. So somewhat of a perch situation. Another set rolling down. Oh. Oh. Regardless, see, it's a little bit different here than, than the perch situation. A little bit different. And then, uh, 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 and then, uh, I believe there's a road course around here as well uh, that they're supposed to be running super bikes on. You can kind of see very similar seating, it looks like, down there to uh, the drag strip at the Perth Motorplex. 
but one thing I did think was very cool about this track when I first came here and saw it, we got another another run coming. Maybe maybe the guy thought uh, they were racing super bikes when he told me that, but maybe they're like drag racing super bikes. Maybe that's what's going on. But one of the cool things I thought about this facility when I first came here and viewed it a few weeks ago, we had some videos, we had some content, but obviously a little bit of a different situation here had to be delayed just a little bit. Um, was this net this is what really caught me off guard and this was to protect the dust of the racetrack from actually going over onto the drag strip the drag strip is obviously behind this uh, uh you know bush they're calling it here in australia this wooded area is what i would call it it's right behind here the back end of the of the drag strip and this net on these poles is somewhat to protect the dust from coming off of the track and landing onto the race uh, or onto the drag strip racing facility grounds over there so very interesting concept here um i know that i i i know that dust is somewhat an issue with some dra uh, race tracks i know that there was an issue down in houston i believe is hrp used to kind of be like the first facility that had a dirt track and a drag strip uh, i don't know if some people remember that houston raceway park down in baytown texas and one of the reasons the dirt track got taken out was because of the dust going onto the drag strip. This had to be like 15 years ago. World of Outlaws, everybody used to go there. But this kind of system that they got right here built in Sydney is different. I haven't seen it before and logically sounds effective. It does sound like it actually does make a difference. Uh, obviously on that end, it's a little open because it's the pitting area nothing really to be affected over there but this drag strip area right here they're trying to protect i wonder how much this type of stuff can be utilized in in different scenarios instead of just protecting against you know uh, 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 a drag strip what else could this protect against could this protect against the cars in the parking lot which it halfway does you know because I, I know a lot of people have to uh really do uh not like going to their pits or going to the parking lot after the race and they got a car covered in dust nobody likes that do they Nobody does. Uh, Josh, book out. We are uh, at the Sydney International Speedway reopening the track here. Uh, the 110, 140, whatever million dollar facility that's had its ups and downs, formerly known as Eastern Creek. We're at aisle 21. As you can tell, they're all numbered all the way around. We started over there at aisle 1, 2, 3. We're all the way down here at 21, and it looks like it goes all the way down. What was this? What's the last one? I see 27. In honor of Greg Hodnett, last one's 27, although some people in Australia apparently don't know who Greg Hodnett is. Nobody here, but a, a doucher on the on the, on the the WA side don't know what Greg Hodnett is. Regardless, um, this is the Sid Sydney International Speedway, and they are reopening tonight. It's going to be a really interesting thing. Sprint cars, late models, and fender benders is the classes on the track tonight. So that's where we are and this is back to the seating back to the i don't know if do i want to call it seating back to the unheard of generalized way to go and view a dirt track i had personally been an american dirt track person my whole life track management fan i've raced i've pitted i've i've mediated i've done it all and i've never been to a facility where the majority of the fans are sitting in fold out chairs but here in Australia, that is a thing. That is like the standard. The standard way to go to view a dirt track event is not grandstands. Like in America, if the crappiest track in the world has grandstands. Nobody brings fold-out chairs. But in Australia, it is the standard way to view. And even though you see thousands of seats for stadium-style seating on this racetrack, which is somewhat rare in itself, they still have this whole open area from the about turn four, literally a little past it, beginning of turn four, all the way into turn two to actually come over here and have a sector for the traditional way of viewing Speedway in Australia. So, oh my, look who just pulled in, guys. Oh my, the, the hitters in the house, Michael Stewart and the Bohud team. Oh my, oh my. Somebody says, that Missouri. I don't know how many times I have to say that it's Sydney, Australia. I just don't get it. 
This is way better than uh, Lucas Oil Speedway, if that's the confusion you're having here. This is way better than Lucas Oil. I'll tell you that right now. Lucas Oil is overrated in my book, personally. That's what I think. Very nice, very great facility. But me, personally, I think Lucas Oil is just a little bit overrated. Just heard about it too much. And, and right now, personally, number one facility in the world is Perth. Number two, though, creeping up on them. I'm telling you. How are you not going to say this is not two? Could potentially be one very soon. We'll see. We'll see. Of course, Michael Stewart rolling in. The, the best driver in the world. In New South Wales, at least. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he's going to be a contender to, to win tonight. Oh, I thought we just had bikes. Looks like we do have some V8 cars coming. That, look, that sounded like some cars. So, drag strip is fully running. Drag strip is running here today. And then the dirt track is slinging tonight. So, Sydney International Speedway. Uh, once again, opener this evening there is no streaming service there is no streaming at all uh but you can come here and watch in person uh i'm sure there'll be a lot of media stuff around the racing around the track i'll probably have some gopros on some cars we'll probably do some film and potentially of some back behind the scenes stuff uh, but there's a lot of things to do around here at the sydney international speedway uh and we got to go do some of it right now but anyways ladies and gentlemen check the place out it is cool it is back racing high end high i mean at this point looking at this place high class racing has returned to sydney australia in a dirt fashion and uh i think a lot of people are excited about it and i am blessed by god to be here to witness it and and halfway little baby step you know fold out chair be a part of it but anyways ladies and gentlemen uh, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. More content coming. Of course, it never stops. Probably will be doing some more lives here for the rest of the evening. We'll be doing them here and there and doing some filming as well. But uh, as always, be sure to subscribe, comment below. Uh, and uh, yeah, we got a lot of things coming. Um, a little update on the uh, travels. We will be going uh, to Gladstone next week uh, for the 30000 to win event. Then we will be going to Gimpy the following week for Super Sedans at the Mountain Hill. And then we will be going probably, I think so, based on everything that's been booked. We'll be The cheaper way was to go to Hawaii for two days and then go from Hawaii back to the States. Is that to go to Texas to watch RPM and, and TMS and High Limit? I don't know. I don't know. World of Outlaws are at I-55 that weekend when I get back, so we may be doing that too. But... The Chaz going back stateside is officially in the books. At least according to the airport. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like the video, share the video, comment with what you think, what you, uh, look, have you ever seen a racetrack look this badass before? And we will catch you later today or tonight. Depends on where you're watching from. Catch you next time.